big year. There's the Winter Olympics, there's a the World Cup. Uh, most of you people are already getting back to work now, this week. I don't know what day is, like the 8th, 9th of January, something like that. I've been working since the 26th of December. Uh, so we've been keeping going, keeping going. But now it's time to update the kid a little bit. I want to do a lot more on YouTube and that kind of thing uh, during the year. Just to try to show you um, what it is we get up to as journalists when we go to these big events and that kind of thing. And to do that, um, I'm going to go and get some slightly better kit, some stuff that's um, more suited to the kind of vlog, mobile journalism kind of thing. I do a lot of mobile journalism anyway, mostly using the phone that I'm doing this on at the moment. But just to get the quality right and the look right and all those things, uh, we're going to invest a little bit of money and uh, see if we can make it the whole YouTube experience better for people. So uh, that will start in the Photoshop in about five minutes if I can find somewhere to pack, which is not a given. <laughs> camera is bought it's unboxed and now we're going to go to Voss at the autumn where we're hoping to meet some people who are going to be involved in the olympics and uh, we'll test everything out there Done at uh, the Vasa Theater where we met uh, Peter Forsberg and uh, Anja Pass on the Swedish skier. Uh, so we used the camera for the first time, unbox it, stuck in the microphone. Microphone wouldn't work, so I had to go back to the store. There's some setting in this new uh, Lumix camera that needs to be fixed, something to do with uh, wind and that kind of thing. It cuts out if there's too much wind or whatever, so that needed to be adjusted by, I think it was Marcus at Scandinavian Photo. Uh, very sort of professional people there, great service, etc, etc. So I took the risk and I went all in and uh, I interviewed Peter Forsberg, the Swedish hockey player, won uh, Olympic gold in 1994. And I'm hoping now that uh, my good friends at Reuters will want that video and that the sound's going to be good enough. You can't monitor the sound, or at least I didn't find a way to monitor the sound in the hour or so they owned the camera before. We, uh, we use it for the interview for Peter Forsberg. So, and then the other thing I'd be a little bit worried about is I couldn't really see the screen as I was holding it up. I wanted it up as high as possible because I, I didn't want to be uh, filming up uh, Forsberg's nose, which is uh, something that can happen when you're doing these things by yourself. Uh, so I wonder how stable the picture quality and that kind of thing is going to be, but that needs to be seen. Uh, now I'm gonna go and train a little bit and then I'm gonna go home and see what the, the uh, picture quality, the video quality is like and see how we can take it from there and see if this five or 600 euros that we've invested in this new kit is worth it or if we have to go back to the drawing board. So as you can see from the rolling screen grab here, Reuters did take the story, they put it together with some file photographs and they also took the video off me as well. Now one of the things we had reinforced today was that uh, good sound could save bad pictures, but nothing could save bad sound, right? So the sound was pretty good, the quotes were pretty good, so Reuters took it, despite the fact that the composition could have been better. When you're working with a new camera for the first time and you're trying to use it by yourself and that kind of thing, you know, um, you usually know where to position people when you have a regular camera, you know, okay, they've got to be there, and this is going to fill the frame, that kind of thing. I didn't know that this time around. I couldn't really see the screen on the back of the Lumix camera the way I was holding it. And you never want to stop when you have, when you have an interview and say, oh, you know, could you move over here? Or could I check this? Worked out pretty good, despite the fact that football was like up here a lot of the time, but it worked out okay. So um, 
they were happy enough with it and it's a good story about the upcoming Olympics in Pyeongchang which you'll be able to follow a little bit here so the idea is to give you a behind the scenes look at how journalism is created in particular sports journalism which I work with a lot but also other things so it'll be everything from the practical kit to the clothes to yeah the electronics to everything else like that and how we go about putting stories together so um, like the channel subscribe to the channel feel free to leave a comment this is just the first video of what I hope will be many we'll put up a couple every week a couple of conversations with people and that kind of thing so who knows we'll be able to have a bit of a dialogue and maybe learn a few bits and pieces along the way my name is Philip O'Connor known in the blogosphere as Our Man Stockholm freelance journalist uh, contact details coming up feel free to get in touch uh, other than that thanks for watching till next time ciao